Hey everyone, Warwick's here. So this was originally going to be a patch 9.2 monk preview video where I kind of looked at what you're going to be looking at for double legendaries, what covenants, what conduits, what soul binds, uh, what you're going to be expecting in terms of just kind of general setup, uh, conduit, you know, just everything you're going to need for patch 9.2 to get yourself prepped. Um, but Blizzard decided to drop a boatload of news. And so that video has now been pushed back. Uh, I'll do a Monk, Hunter, Death Knight, and maybe Warlock preview videos, depending on when they announce patch 9.2. So look out for those in the future. But for now, I wanted to go ahead and just kind of discuss some of the recent news. Uh, I'm not going to bury the lead. You can see it right here on the Wowhead page. We are starting with cross-faction dungeons, raids, and PvP coming in patch 9.2.5. This is significant for two reasons. One, confirms 9.2.5 is a thing. It's probably gonna be like Sylvanas' trial um, from a story standpoint, but holy shit, cross-faction gameplay. Something that probably made more sense to happen at the end of BFA, but I imagine they were probably working on the technical limitations of everything by then. Um, but just need to kind of touch on some of the highlights of this. Um, so the first thing is, is that guilds are going to remain single faction. I don't think that's something that's going to last forever. Um, my gut tells me that this is a way for them to use instanced content as a giant test bot of how everything functions. And then in 10.0 is like a box feature, as we used to call them. Uh, a box feature of 10.0 is going to be that you can have cross faction guilds which means that they may need something like a guild hall. So you have like this brand new non-system feature. You set up a guild hall, which is probably on its own instance thing where you can access guild banks, void storage, just hang out. You get uh, maybe a mission table if they're gonna come back to doing that. Like I imagine it'll be a really, really fleshed out feature. Uh, but let's take a look at this. Um, Group finder will be cross faction. However, the group leader may choose to restrict to the same fashion if you wish. So this gives the element of choice. Those that want to be involved in this cross faction system can go ahead and do so. Those that do not they keep the old battle line, so to speak, they don't have to touch with the system at all. So basically what it means is that if you are a raider that's struggling to fill out your raid, you throw your raid into group finder, you pick up two or three horde folks if you're an alliance guild. Um, it expands the pool of players for those that want to get involved. So if you're on a very like minority faction, so if you're on say Illidan where uh, formerly Limit, now Liquid Guild is at, uh, for example, that's, a, that's like a 95, 98% population of horde. Now, if you're one of the few alliance players on that server, you can you know, hopefully get more game in with Mythic Plus or with raids because you're going to be able to join the horde in doing the raids while still keeping all of your alliance cosmetics so to speak and the racials same thing for mythic plus uh, so fires new all and myself are a dark iron dwarf dwarf and alliance pandaren respectively um, this just is going to open up the pool of players for us if we are running uh, tank dps healer for example we need a couple dps this is only going to open up our pool even more where we might get like a Torin, a Druid, and like a Orc Warlock, or whatever it might end up being. And so, um, I think this is a very, very good thing. It's going to open up the player pool. It allows groups uh, where people like like to be alliance, but their all their friends are Horde. They can now start playing together again. Like this is a huge huge change fundamentally to warcraft so i love this change personally i think it's long overdue um i hope that when they start testing it that they can get all the bugs worked out uh, all the loot rules are going to be the same you can trade inside the dungeon so if you are an alliance character you get say sin stained pendant and your horde uh Buddy needs it, you can trade it to him while you're still in the instance. You can't go to Oribos and do it from what we understand, um, or the interpretation rather is of that. And it's not gonna be open world. So if both of you are in war mode, 
you can summon him and then gank him and kill him or her. Uh, probably not good for your group, but you could do it for funsies. So you'd still be able to have that open world PvP. Um, yeah, so battle tag, a real ID friendship, or if you're a member of a cross-faction WoW community, which I think that's just something you'll opt into in the game. Um, guilds will remain single faction and random match made activities like heroic dungeon skirmishes and battlegrounds will remain same, same faction um, there's less faction driven pressure around those types of groups they say here which I, I, I agree with it makes sense um, also apply to all legacy instances minus certain stuff that they can't uh, tech through right now uh, Dizar Lore from BFA, Trial of the Crusader at Ice Crown Citadel from Wrath of the Lich King. Um, they'll work. I'm sure they'll work on that to make that happen in the future. Um, I like this line right here. At BlizzCon 2019, when an attendee asked about cross faction play, we responded with the time at the time that Alliance and Horde separation is a pillar of what makes Warcraft Warcraft. But upon reflection, that's an oversimplification. Alliance and Horde identity is what is fundamental to Warcraft. And I think that is very, very key. I identify as an Alliance player. I like the Alliance races more. I like the stories on the Alliance side more. I like Stormwind much more than Orgrimmar. Like I identify as an Alliance player. That does not mean that I think that I should not be able to play with Horde people. Um, I've always been someone that's, you know, wanted to have that that ability to choose. So I think this is a really important line because it kind of continues to go in line with what they indicated they would be doing with patch 9.1.5, which is kind of um, changing the way that they approach game design with WoW. Um, this is just another line that kind of indicates that. And so uh, I, I think this is, you know, we got to give praise where praise is going to be they've been listening to feedback through this ptr this has been one of the better ptrs from everyone that's been on board testing it um so shout outs to this this feature i i'm now looking forward to 9.2 for new content and i'm looking forward to 9.2.5 so that i can see the final story of shadowlands but also play with some horde i want to play with horde characters so if you're a horde character please let me know in the comments below we'll talk about exchanging battle tags uh, or you can hit me up on discord from there all right that's not the only news we've had creation catalysts so this is the feature that is going to allow you to craft tier pieces you'll use uh, dungeon pieces and then convert them basically into tier pieces you'll get the stats of the tier sets um, and then depending I'm sure there's gonna be like different amounts for different uh, things so we've gotten more information on that so the creation catalyst is all the way in the very southern end of Zareth Mortis, which if you're flying, shouldn't take that long to get to. And we'll be flying most likely by about week three. Uh, and you'll have to, you'll first come across it in chapter four of the 9.2 campaign, which is cool. And it'll be available for uh, at week eight. So two months into the patch, we'll be able to start crafting our own tier gear. In the meantime, you'll get it out of your great vault or if you raid, of course, from the raid itself. So the idea is that raiders will still get their tier first because tiers historically come from the raid and so you, know, you go with that route but mythic pluses and pvpers can still get it out of their vaults if they get you know roll well enough essentially and eventually everyone's just going to be able to craft so you can get cosmic flux which you get from basically doing everything it's like echoes of nihilotha i think i had something like eighty thousand on my druid by the end of the bfa expansion because you just got so many from doing literally everything uh, so basically you can get an idea. This is the basics of how it's going to function. You stick an item in there and then you convert it into the tier piece. So here, uh, this is a warlock that's converting an item into the robes of the demon star, which is there at 272. That is heroic eye level. You can see upgrade level eight of nine. Uh, and then Kalamazi was playing with it as well here. Um, What's cool is that if you do like a tertiary stat piece, you also get the tertiary stat on the tier, which is cool. Um, and then they have different costs depending on 
uh, slots. So bracers and cloak are going to be 600, boots 800, shoulders and gloves 1200. And then the most itemized place is 1500 for helms, chest, and legs. That makes sense. Uh, from what we understand, though, you can get about 2000 a day. So these don't seem like it's going to be that costly. It's just going to be a matter of, um, you know, when are you, how are we going to be able to do like the 284 pieces? Can I take anima splattered hide at 284, for example, or 283, 285 at 285, for example. And, uh, like if I got it out of the vault and can take 1500 flux and convert it into my, uh, test your test piece and still be at 285 those are some questions still to be answered i'm sure they'll be doing more and more and more um but we finally got some information on the creation catalyst where it's at how to convert and what the costs are those are the big outstanding questions um as far as where it's at southern tip of the zone okay makes sense we can get there pretty quickly it looks like uh, especially once we unlock flying um you know when is it unlocking week eight and how much are they costing depending on the slot. So very, very important news. You can check out this Wildhead page if you'd like for more information. But that's not it. This is just today, basically. Cross faction rating came out a couple days ago. You've probably heard about it by now. But just today as well, there's a new PTR build. So dropped some new stuff. They did some, uh, for Demon Hunter, they did basically some tooltip cleanup um, on the rune carving for Blind Faith. For Druid, they added Sunfire to the Restoration Druid damage buff. So. I think that's very good. It was a little weird that Sunfire wasn't included in the initial buff. Um, for rune carving powders, they did nerf the Kiri and Resta Druid from 8% to 6%, uh, but they did increase the mastery and the haste. They basically reduced the 8%, increased the mastery for signing up with the Kiri. So basically this kind of makes this bonus irrelevant now. It's not irrelevant, it'd still be okay, but it's not gonna be like broken. Uh, I still think you'll see a lot of Druids switching to Kyrian. I think Newall, who plays Druid more often than I do now, uh, is probably gonna go back to Night Fae and go from there. Uh, monk changes, this is important for, your, for this channel in particular, my interest. So Bone Dust Brew no longer can crit strike. Uh, it was, Able to do that for Brewmaster and Windwalker. It was not doing it for Mistweaver, so you don't have to worry about that if you are a Mistweaver. Um, but for Windwalkers and Brewmasters, you're losing that crit ability. In return, you're getting a 5% buff to the ability. This ends up being a net nerf overall. It's about 5% in AoE for Windwalkers. It's a little less than that. I think it's like 4.5 or something like that for Brewmasters based off the early numbers that I've seen. Um, so... Rest in peace, Necrolord. You were fun to play this expansion, but I don't see any reason for Brewmasters or Mistweavers to play, play this build. For Windwalkers, it's still probably going to be viable because you get the Spinning Crane Kick refund, which allows you to just spam the ever-living hell out of Spinning Crane Kick. Your AoE damage, I think, is still going to be good. It's just not going to be, like, broken. Sinister Teachings also got nerfed for Mistweaver. So for Brewmaster and Windwalker Monk, you still get five seconds off whenever you crit while you have your... Your portal open which is just a tooltip clarification doesn't change anything but for mistweaver you're getting that cut in half to two and a half seconds so fallen order basically becomes half as effective sinners to teachings becomes half half as effective this brings it from by far and away the best mistweaver covenant to probably still the best but kyrian and necrolord in particular um, could compete i think kyrian is going to be your next best option because uh, for mythic plus in particular because you're going to get really high gg uptime so I think it's going to be interesting to see. We're still working on kind of the numbers in the Mistreaver community as to what we're going to get. Uh, for Holy Paladins, they are getting a 6% aura buff across the entire board. So they just got their damage like completely nerfed out of Ashen Hollow. Um, now it's getting buffed back up just slightly to a 6%. I still think this makes Holy Paladins very good. I don't think that it makes them the like premier uh, Mythic Plus healer or dominant in the raid i think the raid is actually going to have decent healer variety fingers crossed uh to where you're not going to be running multiple holy paladins i think you'll maybe have one at most because i think protection paladin is also going to be very very important to the raid scene because protection paladins if you haven't been paying attention they're gonna be busted as shit all right priest uh got a mana reduction in sanctify as well as in holy word serenity good for them um, afterlife basically is a talent where when you go into your spirit of redemption you can cast a resurrect 
that does not cost a battle res and cacks kind of like a battle res so uh interesting we'll see what kind of potential it has i don't think it makes afterlife worth choosing uh because you never want to pick a talent that's basically around dying i think that's always a little bit of an issue uh shadow priest got some pretty hefty nerfs as well um they cut pallid command the necrolord covenant ability from 40 to 25 percent of spell power um from what i'm talking with newell let me grab discord uh it is an eight percent nerf in single target but even more significant in aoe as thoughts as much as 20 percent uh, because simming for aoe is a little bit difficult for shadow priest because of the way they work but the napkin mass says, you know, as much as potentially 20%. Um, so Necrolord still probably is your best choice for Shadow Priest. Um, but it, between that and the four piece, I think the Shadow Priest is in a really awkward position. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Shadow Priest, which was really good for most of BFA, was very, 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 very good in Legion. Uh, I guess it's paying for those sins because they've not been in world first guilds basically at all. Or any most if not any boss pull um, and I think that's going to continue for the cutting edge groups it'll still be fine for pretty much everyone else um, but I think in mythic plus they're going to take a hefty nerf duels already prepping being a full-time healer next uh, patch because he's just not been very happy with the direction that shadow's gone this expansion shaman got mana cost for enhancement reduction cool uh, they still need an AoE buff. Buff Crash Lightning. Uh, Ride the Lightning got a little bit of a puff for PvP, but whatever. Uh, they did go ahead and uh, increase the Necrolord ability from 10 to 12 seconds on the uh, Haste buff. So, small little tweak there. I don't think that's game-changing. Makes it still pretty good for Resto and for particularly for elemental, but I don't think it's like game changing. And then they nerfed the Elysian Dirge conduit where for some ridiculous reason, they decided to buff it by 40% plus across the board when it was already by far and away the best setup for Kyrian Resto Shaman in particular, it does just a buckload of damage. They nerfed that, reverted it back to what it was before, which I think is a good change because uh, Resto Shaman I think is already gonna be pretty dominant in mythic plus and i think it's going to be pretty good in pve rating scene as well so that's the latest build 42174 rest in peace 42069 uh it was good to have you for about the week and a half that we did so that's kind of the latest news um other things that i don't impact me all that much but may be important to you uh, boosting communities are basically being banned so if you're going through looking for boosts you have to talk to people directly uh, guilds are offering them already at the high end. They've already set up pages in like their discords for you to apply for boosts. Uh, I don't get involved in boosting. I don't get boosted. I don't do boosts. Um, so it's just a situation where this doesn't impact me. But if you're into boosting at all, definitely want to check out the information on that. Um, trade chat basically disappeared with people spamming boosts in the trade chat. I, I, I guess I, I haven't been in trade chat in ever since I came back to the game, honestly, I almost like the first city I went into, I almost immediately left it because I remember what it was like in the early 2000s or the late 2000s when I was playing TBC Wrath and it was awful. And so I just assumed it's never changed. So, uh, but that's the news video for this week, guys. This will be the video of the week. I'll probably get another dungeon run or two up. Um, I'm going to finish up the scripting for the 9.2 class previews and we'll try to get those out either late uh, middle to late next week as the video of the week for next week and we'll go into february basically until they announce the patch we'll just do a class i'll research a class and we'll do a class preview all the way until they announce the patch once the patch is released that's when i'll start doing guide videos again um, of course monk guides will be the first ones up because that'll be the main that i'm playing but we'll also be doing uh, hunter death knight and maybe warlock but definitely at least those three classes because those are going to be the three that I play. So until the next video, all I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all getting your vaccination scheduled. I hope you're all getting your booster scheduled. Um, hope you're having a, you know, staying warm in those wintry weather or staying cool in the Southern hemisphere for those of you that are experiencing, I guess, late summer, early fall. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace and love.